All right, so today we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. Yesterday we talked about imports and how those are the goods that leave one country and are imported into another country. We also talked about exports and those are the goods that leave, remember that X, like exit, and they leave a country. And we talked about domestic goods, which are goods made at home. Then we also talked about why countries trade and the fact that they don't have the resources to make everything that the country needs, so they have to trade to get what they need from other countries. Next, we went into what a trade barrier is. Let's see our sign for trade barrier. We got trade and barrier. Very good. And we did that because trade barriers stop or they limit trade, all right? We also talked about why trade barriers are used, and it was two reasons why countries use trade barriers. One person give me the first reason, yes. Okay, protection. And we're protecting those domestic industries, making sure that people have jobs, that we're not going out of business at home. We want to protect those domestic industries. Who remembers the other reason, Paul? Political problems or political differences with other countries. Maybe a country did something politically that the other country doesn't like, and so they put a trade barrier out there against that country. All right, and we also talked about protection, like we just said, the, the want to protect those domestic industries. So eventually, our final destination will be related to the standard, being able to compare and contrast the different types of trade barriers. But before we can compare and contrast, we have to know what those trade barriers are. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to identify different types of trade barriers such as tariffs, quotas, and embargoes. So by the end of class, you should be able to say, I can explain each type of trade barrier that stops or limits trade, and you should be able to say, I can recognize the characteristics that make each type of trade barrier different. So today we're focusing on trade barriers. Take your highlighter and I want you to highlight our lesson focus at the top. Our focus for today is to identify different types of trade barriers such as tariffs, quotas, and embargoes. And highlight that so you know exactly what you should be focused on during the lesson. All right, by the end of the lesson, you know you'll have an assessment, just like yesterday, and the assessment for today is a writing prompt. This is the writing prompt you all will be responding to. What are trade barriers, and how do they affect trading between countries? Why do countries use trade barriers? So by the end of class, you should be able to answer that particular writing prompt, okay? All right. So today we're going to talk about three types of trade barriers. The first one is going to be a tariff, the second is going to be a quota, and the third will be an embargo. And every time we talk about a different type of trade barrier, I want us to ask this question. How does this trade barrier stop or limit trade? That's what we have to answer. How does this trade barrier stop or limit trade? So we know what a trade barrier is, now we're going to get into how they stop or limit trade. All right, so take out your notes, make sure you have them in front of you. And we're going to start with the first trade barrier, and that is a tariff. Everybody say tariff. Tariff. All right, so for the tariff, we have to ask our question together. One, two, three. How does a tariff stop or limit trade? Very good. So, fill in the blank where you have the definition of a tariff. A tariff stops or limits trade by placing a tax on goods when they are imported into another country to make the imported item more expensive than a similar item made domestically or at home. So, what word are we putting into the blank? Yes. Tax. Tax. All right. So, a tariff is a tax. Everybody say tariff. Tariff. Say tax. Tax. Say tariff. Tariff. Say tax. Tax. A tariff is a type of? Tax. Tax. Very good. And then I want you to highlight what's in green. We put tariffs out there to make the important item 
more expensive. So when you add a tax to a good, that raises the price. So go ahead and highlight that. That's a very important part of that definition. To make the imported item more expensive. So highlight that on your notes. Very good. So what, a, what does this do? It's a cause and effect relationship. So we put a tax on an imported good. The imported good is now more expensive than the similar good made domestically. Highlight that. The imported good is now more expensive than the similar good made domestically. The effect. People will buy more, more, I'm sorry, people more likely will buy the domestic good because it's cheaper. Domestic industries will be protected. Highlight that last bullet because that's one of the reasons why we use trade barriers. We want to protect those domestic industries. And tariffs help to do that. All right, for example, we have a Ford made right here at home, made domestically in the USA. Then we have an Audi made in Germany, made foreign. That's a foreign good. So when it's made in the USA, it costs $20,000. But when the German car gets imported, it's $20,000, but we're going to add a tariff of $10,000, making it $30,000. So now we have a car made at home for $20,000 or a foreign good for $30,000. Which one do you think people are going to more likely buy? The Ford. They're going to buy that Ford because it is cheaper. It doesn't have a tariff on it, so it's cheaper, all right? What I want you to do now, where it says visually explain how this trade barrier limits trade, we're going to do exactly what we started off doing yesterday. So if I wanted to describe or visually explain what a tariff does or how a tariff stops trade, I might draw a picture like this. Don't laugh. We got the USA. And we have, let's do Spain since y'all are in Europe. So Spain is sending t-shirts to the United States. If I put a tariff, I'm going to stop or limit that trade by adding a tax to those shirts. So once they get to America, they're more expensive than the shirts made at home. So one more time, I got two countries, all right? The USA is importing T-shirts to the USA, but when it gets there, we're going to add a tariff, which is going to make those shirts more expensive. So people are going to buy the domestic-made T-shirts. I want you to take two minutes and visually explain in that box how a tariff limits trade. Go. Remember those arrows from yesterday, imports and exports. It has to be more than one country. Thank you for having two countries on your paper to show that they're going to be in a trade relationship. But how is a tariff going to limit that trade? You have one minute left on your picture. I like how you have the arrows showing that is being imported into the USA. Good. I got to see how it's stopping or limiting that trade. Put that wall up. Block them off. I got it. Make sure you have the arrows going in the right way. Thirty seconds. 
All right, so here's an example, okay? Pencils down, eyes front, pencils down. All right, in order to help Italian farmers sell more food, some people suggested placing a tax on food imported from other countries. Take 30 seconds and discuss with your partner, is this suggestion an example of a tariff? Go ahead and discuss that with your partner. Read it and discuss if you think this is an example of a tariff. What you say? You say yes? Okay. What y'all say? You say yes? Okay. What do y'all say? Okay. All right, so let's bring it back in. All right, so I heard a lot of you guys say that yes, this is an example of a tariff. But let's go a little deeper and answer how we know that it was an example of a tariff. Because you are correct, it is a tariff. So the first context clue that we see is the word tax. And remember, a tariff is a tax, okay? So that was a clue to tell us. Another clue is that they want to help Italian farmers sell more. So that clue tells us that they're concerned about their domestic industry. We want to make sure that those Italian farmers don't go out of business. So that tells us that the tariff is trying to help the domestic industry. So those are some clues that tell you how to identify a tariff. So find the box that says context clues. Everybody got it? Yes. All right, so I'm going to give you some clues to be able to recognize when you're looking at a tariff. And I'm going to write in green because remember, tariff is a tax and it makes a good more expensive, meaning you're going to spend more money. So let's talk about some clues. If you read a scenario and you see the word tax, write that in your clue box. It's going to be talking about a tariff. The second clue that you may see in a scenario, it may give you a percentage saying that they're adding a 4% tax to the cost of a good. That's a big clue that it might be a tariff. Another clue that it might be a tariff is that, is that if you see that it's increasing the price of an imported good in this scenario, that's a huge clue that they could be describing a tariff. And the last clue I'll give you is the reason, which is they want to protect domestic industry. So those are four clues that if you're reading a scenario and you see the word tax, it might be a tariff. If you see a percentage, 4% tax, 3% tax, increased by 6%, it might be a tariff. If they're talking about increasing the price of an imported good, that's your clue, it might be a tariff. And lastly, if it's talking about protecting domestic industry, that's another clue, it might be a tariff. With your partner, I want you to take two minutes in the box that says, in your own words, how does the tariff stop or limit trade? I want you to tell me in your own words, how a tariff stops or limits trade. And you can discuss that with your partner. That's fine. Take three minutes. Go. If how does it do it? I like the way that you said adding. That's a, that's a good way to put it. It's adding a tax. The next trade barrier we're going to talk about is a quota. All right, everybody say quota. Quota. All right, remember the question that we have to ask. One, two, three. How does a quota, y'all mess up, let's do it again. We're on the second trade barrier. One more time. One, two, three. How does a quota stop or limit Trade. Very good. This is what it does. Get it on your notes. A quota stops or limits trade by setting a specific amount for a particular product that can be imported into a country at a given time. 
All right, somebody raise their hand and tell me what word are we putting in the blank? Yes. Specific amount. And I want you to highlight that too. Highlight that with your highlighter. Specific amount. So this is what happens. We put a specific amount on an imported good. Instead of having 5,000, we'll say no. We're not trading. We're not going to uh, get 5,000 cars from you. We're only going to get 10. We have set a specific amount that's going to be imported. So, of course, they're going to run out eventually of that imported good. The price for the imported good will increase, and people will buy the cheaper domestic good, and domestic industries will be protected. Highlight that last bullet. Domestic industries will be protected. But let's go a little further so we can really understand how a quota is limiting trade. Here's our example. All right, eyes front. We have an iPods. And they've been bloody just sending a lot of iPods to Germany. 10 million, just a lot, flooding the market with iPods from China. So nobody's buying the German made MP3. What are they all buying? The iPods. the iPods. They're sending so many. So, Germany comes out and says this. Starting next year, in order to increase sales on the German-made MP3 player, China will only be allowed to export 1.5 million iPods to Germany. So we have given them a specific amount that they can import into Germany. And we're doing this because what do we want people to buy? The German-made MP3 player. We want to protect our German domestic industry. We don't want everybody to buy the China-made um, iPod because then the German domestic industries will go out of business. So after they say this, the price of the iPod goes up. People are not going to buy it. So what are they going to end up buying? The German, the German MP3 player. Very good. That's the way we're going to protect our domestic industry. So if I were to visually explain how a quota stops or limits trade, and get ready because you all are going to do the exact same thing that you just did, I would say... Let's use the same example. We got America and we got Spain. And Spain is still sending us t-shirts. But this time, we're going to block them with a quota and say you can only send 10 t-shirts. We have given them a specific amount. And you'll notice that word in the definition. Instead of them sending a million t-shirts, how many can they send now? 10. Ten. Ten. And we want them to do that because we want them to buy the American-made t-shirts and not just keep buying the t-shirts from Spain. We want to protect those industries. So we blocked it with a quota and gave them a specific amount that they can send us. All right, take two minutes and visually explain how a quota stops or limits trade. Go. So with this one, it's not about a tax, it's about a specific amount. So let's do that. And you can use the same example that you use for the tariff, but you got to switch up how it's stopping or limiting trade. Show me how a quota stops or limits trade. It's not about making it more expensive like a tariff. It's stopping it in another 
way. Okay, I want you to come see this too. Okay, I like the way you gave a, a specific amount, a hundred. Very good. 20 t-shirts, excellent, excellent, excellent. Give me that specific amount. Okay, okay, okay. Only 20 shoes, they have limited that trade, okay? Perfect. I like the way you drew that X, showing that they're limiting the amount that's coming in. Excellent, let me see what you got. <laughs> that's good. I see the way that you have your arrow showing that it's being imported and the wall up. I like that wall, showing that it's blocking them from getting all of their trucks in. Good. Okay. I'll come down on the next one. Okay. All right. So, hands down. Let me show an example of a scenario. So, this one says, in order to help U.S. car companies sell more cars, some people want to put a limit on the number of cars that can be imported from other countries. My question I want you and your partner to discuss is this an example of a quota? Take 30 seconds and discuss that with your partner. Make sure you read it. Is this an example of a quota?
to your country or both. Meaning we won't import nor export with that country, okay? So, this is what I want you to do. Find your visually, explain how this trade barrier limits trade. And watch me with my example. If I were to show an embargo, And I'm sorry, let me back up and show you something. One more thing, the cause and effect. So an embargo stops trade. Everybody show me the sign for embargo. We are stopping trade, okay? The effect, the country with the embargo placed on it will begin to suffer economically because if we're not trading, that country's economy is going to start going down. And because of that, political differences are recognized. Remember we talked about two reasons why we use trade barriers. One was to protect, but the other was all about politics. Maybe we're not getting along with their government. Maybe their government did something that we don't like. So we're stopping trade. Highlight that bullet on your nose. So last but not least, to visually explain an embargo, I'm going to use the same example. Since y'all love my drawing so much. Spain and the USA. So again, Spain has been sending us those t-shirts and maybe in response to trade with them, we've been sending them Y'all are so shoes. hungry. Shoes. We'll do, I can't draw shoes, so we'll do rings. <laughs> That's easy for me. Okay, so we've been sending them rings. But then the Spanish government did something that the USA didn't like. Maybe they invaded a country and we didn't agree with it. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to shut it down and stop the trade. No importing, no exporting, because we don't agree with what the Spanish government did. So I put an X between the import and the export. We're not trading with you anymore because of political differences. You have three minutes, go. I don't see where it's stopping now. I gotta see the stop, not just the trade. You got it? I like the way you drew that X. That's the perfect way to show an embargo because it's stopping the trade. You got a lot of exits, so you must really not want to trade with Portugal. Political differences. Okay, okay, I like the way you have the arrows going both ways, so it's showing importing and exporting, and you stopped it with that X. But it's something we need to add, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to add it. Why are y'all putting the X? We have to have some kind of political difference. So add a sentence that says why you have put an embargo against that country. What happened? What did their government do that you didn't like? So you put an embargo up. 30 seconds and add your sentence. I like that, okay, with Russia. And you put that you dislike their opinion, okay? Spain invaded, so we know we're not going to trade with them anymore. Very good example. Add me a sentence that tells me what that country did. All right. In your own words. I'm sorry. Good. Invaded. And I like the way you have that X. Okay, with Spain, and you see an X. All right, so here's a little example. The United States and Cuba. Now, Cuba, like we said yesterday, is very close. All right, so trading would be easy, right? But Cuba has a communist government, and the United States does not agree with communism. So we put an embargo up. So these walls represent the stopping of trade. 
Can anything get in the Cuba? No. no. So we've stopped trading with them. Can anything get out of Cuba with that wall? No. no. So we are looking at a visual representation of an embargo. Nothing's going in and nothing is coming out. All right? So, last scenario. Due to political differences with Russia, the United States has stopped all importing and exporting of goods with Russia. The United States is hoping to hurt Russia's economy to show disapproval with Russia's political actions. Take 30 seconds and discuss with your partner. Is this an example of an embargo? All right, is this an example of an embargo? Yes. Yes, let's talk about how we knew. I'm gonna give you some clues, some context clues. First, political differences. We already know that we do embargoes and we don't agree with something politically. Stop all imports. Remember, what's our sign for embargo? Stop, Stop. it, yes. All right, and it's talking about they're stopping the importing and exporting of goods and they want to hurt Russia's economy to show that we don't like what they're doing. So let me give you your last set of clues. And then I'm going to turn you loose and see if you can do it by yourself. So hopefully you guys have been paying attention. And I'm going to write in red this time to show that we are stopping what's going on with this embargo. So, of course, our first word is going to be stop. If you see stuff like stop trade, then that's a big clue. Another word, ban, also means to stop. Right, right, exactly. So embargo is the same thing. Can't, we're not letting anything in from your country. We're not going to send you anything either. When you see some words like all trade, that's a big context clue to you as well. And last but not least, if the scenario talks about political differences with another country, that's a big clue that it might be an embargo as well. So take two minutes to in your own words along with your partner, tell me how an embargo stops or limits trade. Go. How does it do it? We didn't talk about a tax this time, or we didn't talk about a specific amount. So how does an embargo stop or limit trade? And tell me why. I want to see something in there about the government or the politics of it all. Stop trade, but why do we do this? 
right, we, we do it for other nations, but why? It's not for protection, it's for political differences. Okay, so we're going to do that. All right, put your finishing touches. All right, let's have you read what you have for embargo. All right, let's listen up. A embargo stop trade by banning other countries' goods because that country government did something we did not like. Okay, so one, I heard the word ban, and I like that because that's what embargo does, and I heard him talk about the government doing something that we do not like, okay? So make sure you have something like that in your explanation. All right, so this is what you're going to do on your own. Around the room, you have scenarios. And you're going to be looking at three scenarios, okay, for guided practice. And I'm gonna tell you step by step how you're going to recognize what type of trade there is being described. Okay, so this is my scenario. The United States does not agree with Cuba having a communist government so close to the United States territory. For this reason, the United States has banned all trade between Cuba and the United States. What type of trade there is, is I'm not asking. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for my context clues. And I see the word communist government, so I'm looking and I'm thinking government. I remember government when I talked about embargo. So let me keep going just in case it's trying to trip me up. Then I also see the words banned all trade. So that's a big key to telling me that this is describing an embargo. So on your paper, it looks exactly like this. What type of trade barrier is being described and how do you know? So of course I know that this is going to be an embargo. And how do I know? I'm going to list those context clues. Like communist government. And my other clue that it was an embargo was the words ban all trade. So you're going to use your context clues and what I've taught you about the three types of trade barriers, and you're going to see what trade barrier is being described on your scenario. And I've given you the steps to be able to do that where it says modeling. Everybody see that? Yes. All right, so you're gonna have three minutes at each scenario, and I want you to discuss with your partner the context clues, how you guys knew what it was. And you have three scenarios to look at. Okay? So, you should be starting on scenario one. This is just me modeling. This is not scenario one. You'll see scenario one when you go to the board or wherever your poster is. Okay? So, go ahead, put your chairs in, go to your first poster where your name is. And I'll tell you when the timer has started. Where you have five seconds to get there. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right? Just in case, I've given you the context clues on the board, so feel free to use that along with your notes to figure out the scenario. And go. Read your scenario. Tell me what it is and how you know. right here.
Don't forget to put those context clues. What did y'all say? Ooh, okay, you're correct. How did you know though? Mm -hmm. So it gave us a specific amount, which is the quote. So where it says, how do you know? That's what I want you to put, 15,000 pounds. That was a big clue. Let's see what y'all had. What did you say? Mm, okay, so no trading. Okay, and there's one more clue though. What about this right with the government, so let's add that to how we know. So that is excellent that you all were able to use those context clues to figure out it was an embargo. All right, get ready to switch. You got about 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, go ahead and switch and go to the next scenario. So far, so good. I like the way you guys are discussing and using your context clues. Very good. I walked around the room and you guys are using those context clues to figure out what type it was. You all were identifying words like tax and the percentages and the specific amounts in the scenarios. Very good, but now it's time to take it up another notch. Independent practice is what I want you to do with your partner. You're going to create your own scenarios now. Just like how we looked at them around the room, now you can create your own. Okay? But this is the thing. I want you to remember to include context clues. All right? So remember to include words like tax if you're doing a scenario about tariff. Or like stop if you're doing a scenario about embargo. Okay? And I'll put those context clues back up so you can include them in your scenario. So for each type of trade barrier, you're going to create your own scenario with your partner. Okay? Question. I didn't say that yet. Just, okay? Yes. Yeah, so very good question where it says independent practice and you have all three, you're going to write your scenario where it says scenario, right in those boxes next to it. Okay? So go ahead and get started. Okay. Include those context clues when you're writing your scenario. You sure can highlight? Yes. You can highlight. Talk about it with your partner. How can you show a terror. The correct context clues. I saw words like tax when you were talking about tariffs. I saw you all including specific amounts when you were talking about quotas. And I saw political differences in your scenarios about embargoes, which is good. Time to let their interruption, teachers. Last call for any funds to be submitted to the bookkeeper's office. Last call if you have funds to bring up to the bookkeeper's office, please bring them at this time. Thank you. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to read over your scenarios. And on Monday, as a review and as a way to make sure that we really, really understand the types of trade barriers, so this was just day one of talking about the different types. So we need another day just to solidify what we learned. I'm going to read your scenarios and then give them back out to you. So you'll be actually working on some of your classmates' scenarios and trying to figure out what type of trade barrier it is because I saw some really good ones, okay? But for today, I want to make sure that we can say our I can statements. And remember they were I can explain how each type of trade barrier stops to limit trade, which we talked about. And I can recognize the characteristics that makes each type of trade barrier different, which are those context clues. So, what you're going to do now, if you flip to the back where it says assessment, you're going to answer this question. And it states, what are trade barriers and how do they affect trading between countries? Why do countries use trade barriers? And I actually gave you a sentence to start you off. 
Trade barriers are used to stop or limit trade. There are three types of trade barriers used to stop or limit trade. The first type of trade barrier is called, and then you all will go ahead and answer the writing prompt. Pencils down, I want you to make sure you include three things. Eyes front. First thing, make sure to include the definition of all three types of trade barrier, because we gotta know what they are, okay? Number two, make sure you include how each type of trade barrier stops and limits trade. Make sure you include why countries use trade barriers. Remember, it's two main reasons that countries use trade barriers. I want to see those reasons in your explanation. And lastly, make sure you use lots of knowledge. Lots just means the language of the standard, those vocabulary words that we taught you yesterday. So I want to see words like import, export, domestic, trade, protection, political differences. Make sure you use those words when you're writing your explanation. Okay? One, two, three, and four. That's what I'm going to be checking for when I read your explanation to this assessment. All right? You may begin on your writing prompt. And if you have any concerns, let me know. So your writing prompt is on the back. Make sure you do all four. 